That was kind of cool. So we're starting to flip a few up. It's the X zone muscle back crawl. Absolutely loving that. Three quarter ounce, straight braid. It's as fun as it gets, flip in there and just feel them pull back down on you. Beautiful fish. They're done spawning, some spawning, but some of those big ones just push up in there and feed on the bluegill and frogs and all sorts of stuff. And this is about as good as it gets. You get that cane starting to lay over like that, like a mat, and uh, just punch through it. Bring it to the top of the mat, shake it, and I think I ate it. This time of year when those fish want to get shallow and they want to spawn, they're going to look for some kind of cover, but they also want that hard sandy type bottom where they can make a bed um, and also feed around. So pretty much any lake in the country, you're going to be able to find something similar to this. Find that structure, that bank structure, whether it's, um, you know, we call these toolies, reeds, a grass line, um, hard cover, find that piece of cover that they want and then get in around it and, and look visually with your eyes, but also fish and pick it apart. So what I'm gonna do now too, in a situation like this, the wind is blowing from my back. Now I'm in super shallow water, I'm around very finicky fish that I don't wanna spook. So I'm actually using my raptors, the raptors and the wind to move along this bank, nothing else. And instead of starting down here and working into the wind and having to continue to work on my trolling motor and, and adjust everything, I'm using the raptors to control my boat. So I just pick them up, that wind just slides me along and I put them down and that's as stealthy as you can get. I've got my stomp switches of my raptors down here and I've also, I have this in my pocket or around my neck as well. So if I'm fighting a fish and I have to run up and down the deck, I can have this in my pocket as well and I need to either bring them up or put them down. But I wanna be super stealthy along here. And so now when I wanna pick across, pick these apart, I'm gonna double tap down. The raptors are gonna go down but I only had them, see how instantly we stopped then? Because I had the raptors only just up off the bottom. I didn't have them all the way up. So when I know I'm gonna fish this area for a long time, I'll just pick them up off the bottom and just move along with the wind even. And then when I wanna stop, double tap down and I'll stop instantly. And that's what I want. I don't wanna have to wait for them to go down. They're already just right off the bottom, bang, shut down. And now I can pick this apart. These fish probably see more boats, you know, and a bit more pressure. Those little things are gonna make a difference to get them to bite, like them not knowing that you're there. Being stealthy and then showing them something that they haven't seen are all big parts into getting those bites. When you are flipping something like this, we've got some open sides and then we've got some mats. And when you're choosing, I get a lot of questions about weight size. And what you wanna do is you wanna have the lightest weight possible that is still gonna go through the cover. If a three quarter ounce will get through there, then that's great. If you, if you back it down a little bit and it won't quite go through, then step up to three quarter. If the three quarter is struggling to get through, jump up to an ounce, 1.2 and work it like that. You don't want that weight to hit and just punch through and go to the bottom too hard. You want it to be able to just get through and that'll minimize you know, the splash, the noise when it lands, and it'll also help you land more fish. The lighter that weight is, the more chance you have of keeping those bass on. The bigger the weight, the more basically the bigger sort of weed guard it is in front of that hook you know the bit if you've got a 1.2 1.5 or even a two ounce weight that's a big weight to not only sort of block the gap of the hook but it also acts as leverage when that bass jumps you've got more weight on the end of that hook um, swinging to actually throw that hook out of their mouth the lighter the weight the bass just doesn't have that leverage to be able to throw it so I'm always looking to fish just the right size that'll get through that cover and uh, it seems to be what the bass will want to bite too. If it just falls naturally and slow through there, they'll come and grab it. Oh, you can let it go. <laughs> That's something you've got to be careful of too, with a heavy weight. You don't, I never set, you know, like a strong hook set. I just pull into them that way. 
you get a better hook up and you don't send that weight flying back at you. But what I'm looking for all the time are those high percentage areas, the thickest part of the mat, the most, you know, this little bit of wind, a little channel, a little cut, you know, something that is a bit more unique, I would say, to everything else, not just the same. And, you know, everyone's fishing these outside toolies and they're the easiest to fish. The big ones, when they get some pressure, they're back in that thick stuff, so. So having confidence in a bait is super important, you know, anytime you're fishing, but especially up shallow. Um, and for me, having experience of catching a lot of bass, different locations, there's just certain baits that fish bite. There's just, it's, I don't know what it is, but you get a bait that fish will bite all over the country and it just seems to work. So when I'm flipping, punching, this one here is my favorite. It's called the Muscleback Craw from X-Zone. And the reason it is so good, I think it's like an all-rounder. It's not super aggressive action, and it's not a chunk style, it's in between. It's got this perfect uh, vibration of the claws. It's got a nice profile. It's got a beautiful, a ton of beautiful colors. And it's about the right size, and they can mistake it for a lot of things. They can mistake it for bluegill, crawdads, um, and any th little bait fish that are up in those shallow areas. And so this one has the perfect like appendages where it won't hit, won't get caught up when you're trying to flip through this heavy cover. And then it's just got the perfect body where the hook will stay in it, it won't get stuck, but when you set the hook, it's gonna drive it home and you're gonna land that fish. So that one's my confidence bait that just gets bites all over the country. Dude. X-Zone Adrenaline Crawl. You now a big thing I got taught from a lot of shallow water guys is it's all percentages. So when you watch some of the best guys in the world up shallow, they're the best casters. And why they are better than most people is they put their bait in more places, in the better spots, more often than anyone else. And that's pretty much like what it comes down to. So this time of year, confidence baits are gonna be obviously a top water, usually like a popper. I'm gonna have a frog on 100% this time of year, no doubt that water temperature, frog's gonna be there. I'm gonna have a flipping bait in something in three quarters to an ounce to get into some of that heavy cover. And then I'm gonna have one with a probably a quarter ounce on it that I can flip to open ends of bushes, overhangs, laydowns, and then probably a chatterbait or a spinnerbait or a swim bait, something that I can throw over those points, over grass, over that open water and, and cover ground. This time of year is fun because the options are kind of endless. When you have a majority of the fish that uh, are in different stages, you've got spawning fish, pre-spawn, post-spawn, fry garters, that's the funnest time of year because there really isn't a perfect way to catch them. You can catch them how, how you want to. Go shallow and uh, catch them how you like to catch them. <laughs>